Coming to you from our Aerospark studios in the capital, Vinduk, this is the midweek edition of Primetime News. Many thanks for joining me for the next 20 minutes as I contextualize events from near and far, shaping the domestic and international scenes. I'm Michael Madimba. In the lead tonight, Minister of the Agriculture, Water and Land Reform Portfolio, Kala Schleidwein, has expressed his gratitude towards the government of Botswana for assisting and cooperating with the government in facilitating the repatriation of Namibians who have been exiled in Botswana. A repatriation ceremony of Namibians exiled in Botswana will be held on Friday at Dobe Border Post in the Ochesunjuba region. The event will be hosted by the Ministry of Agriculture and will see the return of Namibians who have been living in Botswana for generations. I just rise to give a very brief informative statement on the status of the repatriation of Namibians from Botswana. You will recall that that was a long process through which we granted citizenship to Namibians of, that, are, that were eventually started to, to implement. I think it's, an, it's the first step where we made true our promise that our people can come back and we want to thank the Botswana government for assisting us and helping us and cooperating with, with us to facilitate the issuing of papers, the announcement of their original <laughs> citizenship so that we can legalize the process and now um, welcome back <laughs> our citizens. On to events in the Rongo region where Governor Nevo Etope says the Ministry of Health and Social Services has made significant strides in strengthening dental services in the region by extending full-time dental services to the Omaruru and Usakos districts since 2017. The governor was speaking at the launch of the 2024 National Oral Health Awareness Week at Walvis Bay on Tuesday. More from this report compiled by Isabel Bento. We gather under the important theme, and I quote, a healthy mouth is a healthy body. These themes remind us of the undeniable link between oral health and our overall well-being, a connection that is often underestimated but plays a critical role in the health of individuals, families, and communities. It all starts with your mouth, and then it will, of course, go to the whole body of yours, and here we have been we have heard of this. Oral health goes beyond just having a beautiful smile. It encompasses the prevention, early detection, and treatment of oral diseases, which can impact not only our physical health, but our emotional and physical well being. We all know that. Un and untreated oral health issues can lead to other issues of health conditions such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and respiratory infections. The aim of this commemoration is to create awareness <coughs> and advocate for better oral hygiene practices that will contribute to a healthy Namibia. Now, University of Namibia Pro Vice-Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Professor Friednat Gideon, has underscored the need for education curriculum development's alignment with current and future industry needs, as he surmises employers increasingly prefer graduates who are already skilled. Speaking on behalf of UNAM Vice-Chancellor, Professor Kenneth Matengu, at the biannual education conference in Windhoek on Tuesday, Gideon said many jobs require higher levels of skill than in previous years, which higher education institutions are not providing. More on the gist from this report. In fact, in the past, you could be a mathematician knowing how to solve problems. By that, you are well educated and can get employed somewhere. Employers wouldn't actually mind so much. But nowadays, they are demanding something special. They're saying they want a graduate who is actually job ready. Now you need to ask yourself, what does it mean? 
So this is somebody who must already, when he gets into the employment environment, he should be able to work. He should be able to do everything. So universities are now being requested to train graduates in a different manner. So therefore, many jobs require higher levels of skills than were required a few years ago, which higher education is not currently providing. On to some continental happenings from West Africa, where Nigeria President Bola Tinubu visited displaced residents and local leaders in Maiduguri. After flood waters displaced more than a million people in and around the capital of Borno State. More insights from this report, courtesy of AFP. This one disaster that we must pay attention to, we will help Bonus State. We, as a government, as Nigerian people, will pledge with you that we will help in the rehabilitation and execution of uh, problems there. Yeah. It is our problem, not just your problem, not the problem of community alone. The situation that we find ourselves in the environmental problem, climate change and all of this is what we must tackle differently and we must educate our people. Stay tuned for your top roundup with the business segment afterwards. Welcome to the Primetime B segment, the slot encapsulating business and economics. The Minister of Finance and Public Enterprises, Ipumbu Shimi, has dismissed concerns among some businesses regarding the impact of the government directive on tax refunds, asserting that it will not lead to the collapse. Now, Parliament has passed the Income Tax Amendment Act 2024, Act Number 4 of 2024, which provides for pay as you earn deduction reimbursements from the 1st of March 2024 to the 30th of September 2024. Shimi made the remarks in the August House on Tuesday. So, in particular, the, the Tax Amendment Act. As you may recall, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, when we announced that in the budget, we announced that we are going to adjust the tax threshold from 50,000 to 100,000. And, and what that means is, is really that those Namibian taxpayers who earn less than 100,000 Namibian dollars per year will no longer be liable for tax. Previously, that was 50,000. Um, now it has shifted to 100,000. Effectively, it means everybody who paid tax between or who, who, who had an income above 50,000 will now, the, the first 100,000 will be, be tax-free. So I've seen some concerns that have been raised that this may have some financial implications on employers, which is not supposed to be the case. It's not supposed to have any cash flow implications at all. Because in that example that like I, I have given you, you, the employer was supposed to give that money to pay that money, in any case, over to NAMRA. Hmm. So we, we, are, we, are, we are only saying that instead of paying NAMRA, pay that 
pay that portion that belongs to the to the employee to mm. the employee, mm. uh, and only pay Namra the the balance. And of course, if there is an employer who cannot do it at in one at one go, so you have up to February next year to do it on a, maybe on a monthly basis or every second month or something like that. Manager of the Namibia Estate Agents Board, Festus Uningu, noted the deposit for rental payments should be paid into an interest-bearing account and the deposit with its interest should be returned to the tenant when they move out. Uningu made this comment during an interview at the Government Information Centre on Tuesday. The, the estate agents will in most instances, what they say, give the deposit to the owner. Mm -hmm and keep the first month's rent as their commission, um, which is not correct. Right. What should happen, one can understand why they do it, mm -hmm. one must also be honest, mm -hmm. but it's not correct. What must happen is that, uh, you know, the deposit must be taken, the first month's rent must be taken, the deposit money must be paid into an interest-bearing mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm. account. Okay. And uh, then uh, the estate agent must issue an invoice to the person that gave him or her the mandate and say, I fulfilled your mandate, pay me, here's your first month's rent, pay me. But one can understand why they don't, and also maybe because of the practicalities and, and all these kind of things. So what happens in the industry is that they normally, estate agents normally give what they say is the deposit to the owner, and then at the end of the day when the tenant moves out and the question is, where's my deposit? Right. And they know we gave it to the owner and the owner says, but I, 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 I received something for me. I, I was under the impression that it was the first month's rent, etc., etc., etc. But to answer your question, the deposit money is, in terms of the State Agents Act, supposed to be kept in an interest-bearing trust account. Mm -hmm. After um, the tenant moves out, the tenant is entitled to the deposit money plus the interest in that interest-bearing mm -hmm. trust account, uh, less all the the, the, the damages that the tenant caused. And I, I want to pause here. I mentioned earlier that in terms of the common law, the landlord has got certain responsibilities and the tenant has got certain responsibilities. Right. Uh, where and tear, where and tear is or are the responsibilities of the landlord? Let's now consult with the Meteorological Service for tomorrow's countrywide weather forecast. Catch Sport Planet on the flip side.
Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment dedicated to all things sport in action. Manchester City's legal battle commenced on Monday at London's International Dispute Resolution Centre to examine 115 Premier League charges issued against the club. Now, the hearing is reported to have been scheduled for 10 weeks with the Independent Commission's verdict not expected until the new year. The charges facing City who won a fourth straight Premier League title in May date back as far as the 2009-2010 season. It is thought the club, who are also accused of failing to cooperate with an investigation, could face a range of punishments, including a severe points penalty or even expulsion from the Premier League, if found guilty. City were charged by the league in February 2023 after a long investigation into allegations published by German magazine De Spiegel in autumn 2018. The club deny any wrongdoing and have previously said they have a comprehensive body of irrefutable evidence to support these stats. And now the latest in Syria are football. Roma sacked coach and club icon Daniel De Rossi earlier today after a poor start to the season which has left the Syria R team without a win and languishing near the relegation zone. In a statement, Roma said the former Italy midfielder De Rossi has been relieved of his duties after just eight months in charge following the sacking in January of Jose Mourinho. The club's decision is made in the best interests of the team to get back on the desired path as soon as possible at a time when the season is still in its early stages, said Roma in a statement. Roma said that communication regarding the team's technical guidance will follow after firing De Rossi, who was filmed smiling with and signing autographs with fans as he left the club's Trigoria training centre earlier today. A World Cup winner with Italy in 2006, De Rossi was dismissed as his Boywood club with whom he signed a contract until 2027 in June, seat 16th and Serie A, with three points after four matches. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. This is where we dock for the night. It's been a pleasure having you. Another primetime news edition awaits tomorrow, so make sure you catch me same place and time. Now, before I forget, kindly follow the on-screen prompts to stay abreast with happenings on the local, continental and international fronts. Otherwise, from myself, Michael Madimba, and the creative force behind primetime news, it's adios. Good night. <laughs>